Philip Brass. I have sort of stumbled into the work that I do. Um, it's not something I went to school for or took any specific training necessarily uh, for, but uh, I guess in 2014 I started a job with, with my uh, band here at our health centre as the community wellness coordinator. And at that time we were having a lot of issues with some of the youth in the community with um, gang activity and, and there was a lot of violence and uh, um, vandalism in the school and that sort of thing. So um, our hopes was to try to reach out and connect with some of these kids. And uh, so my, my background, I grew up as always a hunter and a, and a fisherman. Uh, my late father taught me the, a lot of those skills growing up. And, um, and then also I've been involved with this ceremony, with some of our traditional lodges here in, in this region um, since about the age of 14. And uh, so I went through a lot of you know, different rites of passage as a young boy and as a young man. And um, so I've always been close to ceremony. And so here we conduct, I have sweats here in this, in this little uh, sweat house here and I often do that with, with community members and with youth. Back in 2014-15 I started to reach out to some of the youth in the community and I just offered them to go hunting. I needed a, an in with some of these, these youth who were you know pretty tough to reach and teachers were having a hard time to connect with them so it was really informal and often on weekends, it wasn't actually on school time, I, I started taking some of these boys out hunting and fishing and that sort of thing. And so that was really my way to connect with them and eventually um, uh, introducing them to ceremony. Um, and in some um, instances, I adopted some of those boys, uh, five of them I actually adopted as, as both my wife and I adopted them as our sons. Um, and there I was able to sort of cultivate leaders out of them and then that was able to have ripple effects throughout the, the community and, and the youth in the community. Um, so it was a really unconventional way of, of going about it. Um, and then that grew on to working with the, the Powell Hills Police Service as well. Um, and then working in the schools, other schools, not just our on reserve school, but local towns. Um, and as I continue to do land-based activities. Uh, my name just seems to becoming sort of synonymous with, with uh, learning from the land programs. So also um, the uh, Prairie Valley School Division and the Treaty 4 Education Alliance have, have connected with me. And so now I find myself doing these uh, land-based activities on a regular basis and working in the schools. Um, you know, sometimes we're doing uh, in class, you know, teachings and, and activities, and then sometimes doing these land-based activities, which are really a lot of fun. Well, I do a lot of fishing uh, with kids and take them out and even setting net. And we'll do, you know, fish filleting workshops, teaching them actually how to process uh, wild game as fish and, and everything else. Um, hunting big game, small game, uh, having talking circles, um, sweats, um, and then even just uh, going to other ceremonies in the communities and uh, serving as, as helpers, being a, a scat beosuk. Um, and then, you know, teachers will ask me to come in to speak specifically on different, uh, different issues, whether it's uh, talking about reconciliation, uh, the history of colonialism and um, ongoing uh, struggles with, with, uh, with Canada and the province. So um, most of it is being a resource for teachers in, in navigating some of those really difficult uh, conversations that I think a lot of them are struggling with. So we met uh, Burt Fox uh, students, grade 10, and that's their learning from the land program. So yeah. uh, that group is, is together for this semester uh, as a group. And uh, they're, they're covering a lot of different stuff. I mean, land-based skills, survive, winter survival, um, but also uh, First Nations history. Uh, treaty history and uh, Métis history, so it's it's pretty comprehensive and in, in, um, not just land-based activities, but just understanding who they are as, as Indigenous uh, young people. Um, so today we we went out to the west side of Papixi's First Nation, uh, my late uncle's land, and uh, it's a place that I grew up hunting rabbits and deer and, and moose even. Um, so I knew kind of where to go 
And I guess that's really what I'm able to do is offers it because my knowledge of the land in, in the region and yeah. knowing where to go fishing or knowing where to go hunting. And um, so, yeah, I think we had a, made a successful day. I think there was 19 of us or 19 kids or more yeah. plus the teachers. And so we set snares up and uh, I don't know how many snares we had at least. Well, I guess about the same number. Yeah. And then Wonder just, uh, yeah, um, bushwhacking through the bush and, mm -hmm. and getting the rabbits uh, moving. And, and we managed to chase a few into the snares and and then able to, uh, you know, give the kids that that hands-on experience in, in, in being there and, and seeing that whole process and, and learning how to skin rabbits and cut rabbits and um, getting them out of their element, right? And I think that's the, the power of that land-based learning is, you know, when you see the kids in the school institutions that are just so restrictive. Um, I think that really is reflective of a lot of their behavior issues that we're, that we're seeing and uh, attention spans that uh, start there. But when we, we see their, their behavior shift after an hour or two and they become a little more cooperative, they become um, more engaged in, in the here and now. And uh, I think it's, it's a powerful tool. I'm not always necessarily the teacher. Like I'm, I'm part of the equation, but really it's the land itself, you know, and it's, it's being out there. I think that that is such a memorable, memory, memorable experience for them. Um, all senses are engaged in, in those activities. And, uh, you know, sometimes it plants a seed. It might not make it, the, you know, a huge significant difference today or the next year in their life. But I think it's, it's something that as they become young adults, they might, they might remember, they might say, hey, I remember doing that. You know, it's something they might engage in again later in life. So it's, it's, it's planting a seed um, so that they have, have something to um, come back to, you know. Because, I mean, I think that in general in life, I mean, we get carried away in, all, in a big society. But as Indigenous people, um, having a connection and in in an intimate relationship with, with the place, places that we're from, um, with the landscape and the... In the the ecosystem that we're from. Mm -hmm. It's important. There's an old saying is you say, you know, education's our new buffalo. Um, I struggle with that one though. I, I, I would still argue the buffalo is our education, always was, always is. Um, meaning that the land is, is really our, our education. I mean, I think that we can, it's important to um, to be educated in, in, in the Western um, model but at the same time we can very easily lose ourselves and I think we lose something very significant when we um, when we remove ourselves from that, that land-based lifestyle so I think that um, it's 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 critical um, and it's imperative that we that we reconnect our youth um, with these land-based activities and to meld that with language I think that it's really important if we want to hold on to our languages we have to reconnect them with them with those activities and with, with that land base because our languages are emergent from that, that life and yeah. um, it gives, gives it relevance. So, yeah, it's difficult. It's, you know, the conventional model of education is, is often really restrictive, especially in the, in the elementary and high school uh, grades. So... I think we're in early stages, a lot of growing pains going through, um, trying to implement land-based education. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think it can be done. Um, and, you know, in some, in some communities, it's more successful than others. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, too, I think it, it has to include um, our traditional institutes, like, like the Sweat Lodge and, and others. Um, those, are, those were our educational institutes and um, giving our youth um, an opportunity to be a part of that is really, really an imperative in, in, in a well-rounded education.